the timeline is kind of the center of the universe when it comes to working in After Effects, so I want to give you a rundown on some of the features in the timeline. To follow along, go to Working Files, After Effects Projects, and double-click on 0205 Timeline. I have a fairly basic project set up here. I've got four layers, some text, something called an adjustment layer, a shape layer, and video in the background. If I move this along, you'll see that the text has some 3D animation associated with it. See those letters popping up there? And then this little sort of orange banner there is what's called an adjustment layer that I applied some color to using hue saturation. And then there's a shape layer behind there adding just a little bit of a gradient back there, that little gray thing back there. So this is the timeline. You should probably see it going full left to right like this. If you don't, you can go up to the workspace and click this drop down list and choose reset standard like that, or choose standard just to begin with. Timeline has timed across this time ruler. If you go along here, you see that this is in seconds, and this is 27 seconds long. That's the length of the surfing video. You can see it's 27 seconds there. When I set up the timeline, I had it match the length of the video. So the surfing layer is on the bottom, and then I've got a shape layer, an adjustment layer, and text. If you look across the top here, you see there are columns, and there are groups of things in the columns. I'm going to go left to right here and explain the columns. This group right there, those four things are called AV features. This little eyeball turns the layer on and off, so I can turn off the visibility of the text or turn it back on like so. This next one here turns on or off audio. There aren't any audio tracks here, so you don't see any audio showing up here. This one here is solo. If I click that, it'll solo adjust the text there, for example. But if I add a solo for the video, then it shows those two things. So it's not truly solo. It just depends on how many of these little buttons you turn on there. There you go. Button, which means that you cannot edit this. If you click on it, it'll just blink at you there, flash at you. It means you can't edit that when you turn that on. This is the label. That's the color that you can give to any particular layer. Colors are applied by default depending on the type of layer, but you can just click on a label and change it to something else if you want to do that. This is the layer number, and the layer number is assigned from top to bottom sequentially. So the text layer is not actually layer number one in terms of assigning number one to the text layer. It's just based on its position here in the timeline. If I drag the text layer down to the bottom, it's going to become layer four. It doesn't retain the layer number. The layer numbers are based here from top to bottom. So I'll drag that back to the top here so you can see it again. There we go. Right now it says source name. If I click on this, it changes the layer name and you get these square brackets around here. And people get confused by this. They see these square brackets and they wonder what the heck is going on. That's because it's taking the name that you gave it here in the timeline. If you switch back to the source, then it'll take whatever name you have up here. Or if it's a type of layer, it picks up the layer name based on the type of layer. Text layers get their names from the text that you type here, but you can always change that if you want to. This next little group is called the switches. There's a bunch of them here together. You can tell they're bunched together because of these little lines here that sort of identify that's a group there from there to there. This is called the shy button. If you want to shy a layer, meaning hide it, but still show it up here, you can click on this little guy. Right now he's peeking over the edge there. If you click there, he's hiding behind it. But you still see it, right? That's because you need to turn this on if you want to hide a shied layer. So now it's gone, but it still is visible up here. Just that you don't see it down here. It kind of simplifies things when you're trying to work on just a small number of layers rather than all of them. You can shy some of them and turn them on or off like that. I'll unshy him. This next one refers to how a layer is either rasterized or transformed. Depends on the type of material that's in the layer. This is the quality. Right now it's at high quality. FX turns on or off all of the effects applied to any particular layer. So for example, the adjustment layer has this orange thing in the background. If I click that, that'll turn that off and now you see the blue in the background like that. This is called frame blending, and this allows you to take video that has multiple frames and try to get them to play smoothly, or at least smoother. If you click on one of these guys to apply frame blending, either kind of low quality or high quality, then nothing will happen until you actually say, turn on frame blending, enable it like that way. Then it'll play back more smoothly for some things. I'll turn that off. This is motion blur. When you have things moving through the screen, not video, but objects moving through the screen, as they move through the screen, you can apply a little bit of a blur to them, makes them look more realistic. This little guy indicates that this is an adjustment layer, which is pretty obvious by the name of the layer, but you can turn any layer into an adjustment layer. An adjustment layer basically is a transparent layer on which you can apply effects. So I can take the surfing layer here, click that, and it's going to go away. It's going to become invisible, become an adjustment layer. So you can turn them on and off that way. This indicates whether a layer is in 3D mode or not. There'll be a box here if it's in 3D like so. 
In fact, there are two boxes here. It's because this is text, and we're using what they call per-character animation in 3D here. Click on this, you'll see that it says Enable Per-Character 3D there. So we're doing not only a 3D layer, but we're having the text behave in a 3D space. See how they pop up like that? That's the text behaving in 3D there. We can turn these switches on or off as a group by going down to this button there, little checkbox. If I click that, it turns them off, turns it back on. There's another way to turn these guys on and off as well. If you right-click on a header here, any header, doesn't make a difference, right-click, it'll say Columns. Then you can turn Columns on and off. So there's switches. I can turn it off, right-click, Columns, turn switches back on. A few more things I want to show you. If I go over here, I can click on this button that says Expander Collapse, the Transfer Controls pane. Not really totally clear why this would be called Transfer Controls, because this is a blending mode where you blend two different layers together. So, for example, we could blend the white letters here with the orange beneath them and other layers below that, change different blending modes, and things look different. There you go. I'll go back to normal. There we are. This is what's called the track mat. We're going to discuss track mats in some detail because they're really a powerful feature of After Effects. But basically, when you assign a track mat, you take this layer and assign the track mat to the layer below it if you change this. That means if I apply a track mat here, these white letters will just take on the brown underneath them, and then nothing else will show up around them. The brown will just be here instead of the letters. So I click those guys. I can make those alpha mat on top of them. You can barely see them there. I'll try to move over a little bit so you can see a little brown starts showing up there. That's a track mat. I can make an invert, and we can see that all the brown shows through around the outside, and then the blue shows through below it. That's a track mat. We'll cover that in lots of detail. I can turn those guys back off. There's one more thing to click here. This is called the in-out duration stretch panes. This shows the in and out points for these clips. Right now, the in and out points are all the same because they're all 27 seconds long and we've not changed them. But if I were to change the end point here, you notice how they're changing the durations, getting shorter, things like that. You can also stretch clips, make them go into slow motion or fast motion, what have you. Turn the text back on there and get rid of these guys by clicking on this. Or I can right click here. They say, columns, I can turn off these things one at a time, kind of a drag, or I can hide them one at a time. Hide this means hide that column, or I just do this, get rid of all of them at once. I can also toggle these switches modes, it's called. I toggle them, I'll turn on these guys, but turn off the switches, going back and forth between the two things. Sometimes you want to work only on a track mat or a blending mode, so you work on that for a while, then you switch back to the switches mode like that. There's one more thing that doesn't show up in these buttons over here, but does show up if you right-click there. That's called parenting. Click on parent, and that lets you use one layer to control another layer. This is the parent thing. I'll just right-click here and say hide this. And there are two more things here that you can view if you want to, but most folks don't. I'll open this up. You can have keys. I'll show you what keys means in a second. And you can also right-click here and say comment. You can type in a comment here if you want to type in comment. Right-click here and get rid of comment. I'm going to show you keys in a second. I'm going to open up a clip that has effects applied to it. We have effects applied to it with keyframes, and you can control the keyframes by clicking on this little guy here. That's the keys, that's it's called. But the keys, by default, will show up over here in the AV feature. So I'm going to turn off keys and watch how this guy shifts over there. The keys column is kind of superfluous when you've got it over here. Now, some folks like to rearrange things here. You can take a whole group here from one little line here to the other like this one from there, and move it around. Some people like to have the keys controller here off to the right. So you grab this guy and move it. See how it slides over like that? Slide it over to the right, and then you got the controller there right next to those guys. Some folks like that. You can take this and slide it all the way to the left, like that. But I like to have the default view, so I'm going to take my AV features and slide that back like that, and put my switches over here to the right. There we go. And now we're back to our starting position. You can zoom in on the timeline. Right now we're looking at the whole 27 seconds of it, but sometimes you need to work on something up close and personal. So I go down here and slide it in like that. And it zooms in on the current time indicator, centering it up as it moves along like that. A couple of keyboard shortcuts for that. If you want to zoom all the way into the frame level, you press the semicolon key. Now we're down to each frame. You see it says 10F, 11F, those are frames. If I go shift semicolon, that zooms all the way out. A couple of keyboard shortcuts that you'll probably use quite a bit. These guys here on top also control a few things. I'm not going to explain all of them. This is a little flow chart. This is what's called live update that's on by default. That means that as you make changes, they show up immediately, which is probably a good thing. 
This is called Draft 3D, which means when you play this with that on, then any 3D stuff will be done in more like a wireframe so things go faster. You've seen this one already. That's the hiding the shy layers. This is frame blending. This is motion blur. Something called brainstorm, where you give it a number of keyframes and it kind of plays with them and comes up with different concepts. And you can pick ones that you like. This is auto keyframing, which is a nice feature where every time you make a change, it automatically adds a keyframe. And this is the graph editor, which allows you to fine tune your properties by opening up this little graph like that. So that's a quick rundown here on the timeline. It's something we're going to be dealing with a lot. I'll be giving you some more keyword shortcuts and helping you manage all kinds of properties here in the timeline as we go through this course. Thank <laughs> you.